So Thorsense have just launched, so this is going to walk you through how to mint, redeem, and swap Thorsense on ThorSwap. Thorsense or Thorchain Synthetics are assets that are one-to-one -one redeemable for native assets like Ethereum, Litecoin, or Bitcoin, but the synths are native to the Thorchain blockchain. So synths are always one-to-one -one redeemable for the underlying asset, but with them being native to Thorchain, you can avoid expensive gas fees, for example, with Ethereum, and they also settle much quicker so you don't have to wait for a slow chain like Bitcoin. So synths are a great option for somebody that wants to do more frequent trades but doesn't necessarily want to pay expensive gas each time or have to wait for the native slow transactions to settle, yet the synths are always one-to-one -one redeemable immediately for the native asset. So to trade with synths, it's going to be the same process as normal swaps. So we can just head over to swap and I've already got a wallet connected. I've got a little bit of Bitcoin here that we're going to be using, but this process would be exactly the same for any asset on ThorSwap. And you can also trade between the synths, of course. You can also really mint any synth against any asset because on the back end they're being minted from native rune. So really your Bitcoin is being swapped to rune and then your rune is minting a synthetic asset. So if you wanted say synthetic Litecoin, you could actually mint that from native Bitcoin if you wanted to. So steps are always the same. You can really go from anything to anything. So here I'm going to be starting with my Bitcoin. So we'll just pick our asset as if we're doing a normal swap, except we can go to synth and see the synthetic assets. So let's just go with BTC to synthetic BTC, and we'll just do a little bit of Bitcoin. Also, I'm recording this on StageNet before it goes fully live, so you'll notice the fees and slippage are uh, very high, but this will not be the case once it's live. There are fees to mint and swap synthetics though, but the slippage fee is reduced by half when you're dealing with synthetics instead of native assets. And also the outbound network fee is just the 0.02 rune. So that makes trading synths a lot cheaper. So again, because I'm on stage net, I'll just say that I'm okay with higher slippage. And then let's go ahead and mint this synthetic Bitcoin. We'll see it pending as a swap here. So in the case of minting, it does depend on the speed of this blockchain. So we'll have to wait for that Bitcoin to get sent in. But then when trading synth to another synth, that's only going to take five seconds. So as that goes through, what's really happening on the back end here is that native Bitcoin is being added to the Bitcoin rune liquidity pool. So half of that Bitcoin is essentially being sold to buy rune which puts buy pressure on Rune, but it also means that the synthetic Bitcoin is backed by the 50-50 liquidity pool position of Bitcoin and Rune. All right, that Bitcoin transaction confirmed. It says we've received our synth BTC. And in our wallet, let's just refresh. And we'll see that it's on our ThorChain address. So again, any synth is a native ThorChain asset, so you'll always see it here under your Thor address. Okay, so now let's take that synthetic BTC and do some other synth swaps. So just like any other swap, we just need our from and to. I'll just reverse these. So BTC synth, we'll swap this to synthetic BNB. Let's just do all of it and we'll see the fee breakdown. Again, this slippage is high because I'm on stage net, but this is actually half the slippage of a normal native BTC to native BNB swap, for example and the fee is just the low native rune fee, so make sure you have a little bit of rune, and let's swap and confirm. Again, we'll see it pending like any other swap. And super fast, now we have the synthetic BNB. Then one more time, we could take that synthetic BNB and swap it to synthetic Doge if we wanted to. Let's just select all of this synthetic BNB to synthetic Doge. Again, we'll see the fee breakdown and swap and confirm. We'll see it pending. And seconds later, we've got our synth Doge. We can check our wallet, give it a refresh. And there's our synthetic Doge again under our ThorChain wallet. So now let's do a redemption which is really just the same process as a swap, but we'll be going back to an actual native asset. So let's go from this synthetic doge that we have and swap to, we would just, instead of being on the synth tab, we would just go to all assets or just find whatever asset that you wanted. And of course you could just do this one-to-one -one minus the small swap fee to native doge, but you can also just do it to any 
native asset that you want to, not just the same asset as the synth. So you could do it to Doge or you could do it back to any asset that you want. And it's basically just doing the swap at the same time. And when you're withdrawing, you do have to pay the outbound fee uh, because you're getting the native asset again. So if you were, say, withdrawing from a synthetic ETH to ETH, then you are going to have to pay Ethereum gas fees in that case. But all the time you've been in the synth and trading, you've been getting extremely low fees and really quick trade times. So let's actually just go and withdraw synthetic Doge to native Doge for the sake of the example. But again, could be native Rune, could be native Bitcoin, uh, whatever you want. And we'll see the fee breakdown. And now it just says redeem instead of swap. And confirm. We'll see it pending. Synth Doge for Doge. And again, don't worry about this slippage. That's just because I'm on StageNet and these pools have really low liquidity. So that's confirmed. The native Doge is now in our Doge wallet. And again, same exact process for whatever you want to go from or to. You could start with native BNB, go to synthetic Doge. You could then swap between a bunch of different synths, and then you could withdraw to native Bitcoin or whatever you wanted. But you can really go any direction you want. So that is how you mint, trade, and redeem synths on ThorSwap. This allows for really cheap and fast trading, always redeemable for the one-to-one -one native asset. And they also increase liquidity pool depth, put buy pressure on Rune, and they lay the groundwork for a lot of really cool future features such as synthetic vaults where you'd be able to lock up your synth and earn a fixed rate yield backed by the underlying liquidity pool. This is something coming later on, but very exciting. And synths will also be able to go out via IBC. So a lot more great features coming to synth soon, but for now you can take advantage of the really cheap and fast trades.